Hello, all. This is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I want to talk about moving for grad school or for your PhD and what you should consider, some things you should consider when you're moving. So if you don't know me, I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project, give back as much as I possibly can. There were so many people that helped me out along the way to become a professor. I decided to do something about it and pay the favor forward. <laughs> So I did these, I, I created a, a sharing economy proofreading platform so you could get feedback on your writing and now to get the word out. I'm doing all of these YouTube videos, which is crazy to help out other people. Um, anyways, so with that, uh, you know what? Moving for graduate school is like one of those things that, that every most people will have to move for graduate school. It's only a, a fraction of the number of people that will stay at the same institution that they did in their undergrad. So when I'm talking about gra uh, graduate school, I'm talking about if you're doing a master's program or a PhD. A lot of the stuff I talk about on this channel is sort of related to do, becoming a PhD in some sort of way, but you go through the ex exact same experiences when you do a master's. Um, and it's really, really common for a lot of people to move thousands of miles away. So if you don't know this, most professors actually move a lot. And this is kind of one of those things that is kind of an unspoken rule or it's 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 just extremely common it's for people to move thousands of miles away on a regular basis when they're a professor if you didn't know that people do that all the time they also um, will move overseas on a regular basis if not sort of on a temporary basis or you know on a more sort of serious long-term basis and the reason is it's just knowledge changes and one place becomes hot if you don't know that, um, it's sort of intellectually, there'll be places every couple of uh, five, 10 years, there'll be a place that'll be, become hot. And the reason is, is that there's somebody that's really cool at that place and it starts to attract people to that one particular place. And then it shifts because something else becomes cool and then other people go to that place. And that's kind of normal and that happens a lot. So even in academia, you, you have the same sort of experiences. And so we're pretty used to this kind of stuff. In my undergrad, I was um, I was fortunate enough to be part of a, they have a co-op program at the University of Waterloo, which is in Canada. And it's wonderful because every four months you move to a new loca location, you work for four months or you go to school for four months and you work for four months at a different location. So I moved all over Canada for that. And then, um, you know, for graduate school, I stayed at my master's, I stayed at the same school at University of Waterloo. And then after that, I, I moved a um, couple of hours away. But even for my undergrad, I had to move 1000s of miles away or kilometers away, depending on where country you're from to go to do my undergrad. And that was one of those things. It's um, yeah. and, and then now I moved to the US. Um, I now live in Florida, one of the and work at one of the large universities in Florida. So um, you know, this is just part of the life. And so there's things that I've personally learned that you might like to understand and to learn along the way um, about moving when you're when you're going into graduate school. That you know, I didn't. I, there was no resource like this. There was nobody helping you sort of giving you these kind of tips and stuff when I was going through. So that's the wonderful thing with YouTube, right? Is that I can share this kind of stuff. So first of all, don't feel bad if you're moving. Um, it's just part of the process. A lot of people go through that. You're very fortunate not to move. In fact, I don't know a lot of people that actually don't move for their um, for at whatever stage they're at, even if, if, if it's their master's or their PhD. Um, but, you know, there's there's things to consider along the way. So the first thing when you're moving for your graduate program is um, most people actually stay in that location a lot longer than they think they're going to. So this is this is pretty much a universal law that I've I've seen. And you know what, there's actually psychological research on this, the whole planning fallacy thing is that we, we really underestimate how long we're going to be in one particular location. Um, we think we're going to be there very short term. And so we make very short term decisions in that in those locations, but it often turns out you're there for an extremely long time. Um, you know, every person in academia that is thought that they're only going to be at an institution for a year, they end up being there for 10. 
You know, it's just one of those things, right? So even when you're doing a PhD, uh, you might think you're only going to be there for four. I only thought I was going to be there for four. I was there for seven. Um, at my institution right now, I only thought I was going to be here for a couple of years. And now um, I'm going on for like seven. And it's a wonderful institution. So, you know, that it just happens that way. You just end up being there for a while and you kind of get used to, um, you, you just realize that. And as you kind of get more experience with this whole game, you do realize that you just end up being at a location longer. So think more long-term than you're thinking about. So if you're thinking pretty short-term, expect it to be a little bit longer than you thought. So even if you're doing a postdoc and you think you're only going to be there for a year, well, if you move to a city, you're likely to sort of find roots somehow in that particular city or find a different sort of opportunity. It just happens. And, and you know, that's really one of those things that just happens. So just try to take that into consideration. Um, so the second thing that, and, and this is kind of related to the first issue with people sort of being sort of short term and thinking they're only going to be there for a very short term uh, amount of time, but think that you're actually, when you're there, kind of enjoy the surroundings. I've met a lot of people that have lived in certain locations and they've lived there a long time and they've never experienced some of the cool things that are at that particular location. Now, granted, I haven't learned, I haven't did a lot of things where I'm at right now in um, in Florida, but you know, I, I would love to do some of those things and, and to sort of grow, grow roots in sort of exploring those kind of different things. I'm just a little bit, I've got little kids, so all of my stuff is playing baseball and stuff like that, right? Um, so if you have the opportunity to do go to venture around the city, I would encourage you to do that. When my, when I didn't have kids, pre-kids, um, I guess that's PK, right? Uh, but anyways, um, before I had kids, I, we would go for um, drives and explore things around or just go do things and explore what's what's the place we had to offer. And there's, there's amazing places, even if it was kind of remote. So where I was at before was at uh, the Ivy Business School at University of Western Ontario. And uh, it's somewhat people, some people would say it's remote. It's a pretty large city, but at the same time, it's kind of off of, it's not close to Toronto or, you know, a major city. And so people kind of discount that, but there's some really wonderful sort of farm communities and stuff like that that were around the area. And we got to go to, there's really cool, there's this amazing place. Um, it was, uh, and I'm blanking on the name right now, but they had the Rosie Rub Rhubarb Festival. And this is how awesome it was. Uh, there was. Like the town itself is maybe 500 people, but we went to it and what they had is they had um, uh, sheep tic-tac-toe. Tic so you'd actually put money on the tic-tac-toe board and where the sheep would actually take a poop. <laughs> like how awesome is that? So I had this little pen and it was a tic-tac-toe board and it would just wander around this pen and whatever, take a poop, then you would win that prize that was in in you know whatever whatever the, the money was like how awesome is that you're not going to get that anywhere else it was it's called the rosie rhubarb festival because they celebrated having rhubarb every year which is a wonderful if you're not from north america or, or you know northern parts of north america it's kind of a really tart uh, really sour sour kind of fruit sort of thing um it's like a root between a cross between like a rooty kind of thing and a fruit um, and you make pies and desserts and stuff with a lot of sugar. If you eat it, it it's really tart. It's like a lemon, um, like that tart, but it's, it's wonderful. But anyways, like if I didn't travel around, I wouldn't have got the chance to explore that or go to maple syrup festivals with a couple hundred people, you know, like I just, that wouldn't have happened or here I go, we go to the coast and look at alligators and things like that. Like that's, that's pretty cool to be able to do that kind of stuff. And, you know, if you don't take the time to go visit where you're at, you're never going to get a chance to do that. So a lot of people think that they're only going to be in a little a location for a little bit of time, ends up being a long time. And then you miss out. And, and if you don't sort of travel around, you miss out a lot of things that are wonderful around you, like just life, right? At the end of the day, that's what it is, just life things that, that are really special and that kind of keep you going going forward, right? Um, so the third thing I'm going to suggest you to do, and it's probably related to the next couple of ones, um, is just 
make sure that you invest in, um, you know, it's a good iPhone or iPad or whatever it is, or, you know, something that you can use FaceTime, Skype to talk to the people that uh, you have back home, right? And the people that you know back home. Because it actually is really helpful if you've traveled and, or if you've never traveled before having that access. It really does make you feel like you're at home and uh, you can have a conversation. It's not quite perfect, but you know, you do feel like you're there and you can have a conversation with people that are, you know, I talk to my, my mom and my family on a pretty, you know, somewhat regular basis as much as we can. And, um, you know, and early when you're starting out and this is your first time away from home, talk to your mom and your parents or whoever it is that you need to talk to, talk to them a lot on, on, on that. And it is helpful. It works. Um, and you kind of get over that feeling. Um, the second thing or the, the fourth thing that I would suggest is if you need to travel home, travel home. I, I, yes, there are some people that are going to be watching this that are traveling thousands of miles away or going overseas and, you know, doing that whole adventure thing. But, you know, every once in a while you do need to travel home and, you know, people do do that on a pretty regular basis in graduate school and you take yeah, if you have to go back to India or if you have to go back to China, um, you know, take a, a couple of weeks and go do that. And that's just part of what you have to do. And it's part of life of living abroad. Nobody, I don't think any graduate advisor or supervisor is ever going to discount that in any sort of way. They realize that you need to go home and you need that, that, that you just need to be part of that community, right? And and that's just part of it, especially if you have close relatives and things that you need to take care of. Um, the, the fifth thing is, and this is a big one, is just expect to get lonely. Um, it's going to happen. And, you know, you have to figure out ways to deal with that. And the worst day for me was always on Sundays. Uh, so I come from a big family and Sundays was a big sort of celebration day for us. And so it, it might be Saturdays, but whatever day is kind of like the off day for you, expect to get lonely. And on those days, you should probably plan to do things on those days to go. And, you know, maybe it's your day that you go and, uh, you know, you go get your food for the week and go to the grocery store and go travel or, you know, go exploring, whatever it is, but that's going to be an important day for you to make sure that you're busy and you're probably not sort of alone with your thoughts. Those are the days that kind of eat you up a lot. Um, so just plan on that, that that day is going to be your day. So you have to uh, make sure you plan around all of that one day that's going to make you lonely. Know which day it is for you. For me, it was Sunday. It's probably lots of people. It's going to be Sunday just because that's kind of a down day for, you know, not a lot to open and stuff. But it's also a wonderful day to explore or go out for breakfast or whatever it is, you know, do the thing that, that you enjoy. Um, that's it. So hopefully that helps you with uh, moving for graduate school. Uh, I could do more tips and stuff like that. If you want, just put comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if there's anything else, make sure you do let me know. All right. So, and oh, give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.